What's up you freaking geniuses? So in this video I'm going to teach you how to divide and simplify radicals that have variables and exponents in them, right? So let's start with this one right here. So we have the square root of 6x to the fifth over the square root of 2x, okay? So one thing that we can do here is basically just combine our two radicals into one big ass radical, right? So then let's do that, right? So on top right here, we're going to have 6x to the fifth, 6x to the fifth over 2x. Okay, so we basically took all our crap, right? We took this crap and this crap and we just combined it inside of one big radical like that, okay? Now we can basically just start simplifying what's inside of this fraction right here. So let's do that. Okay, so we're still keeping our gigantic big radical right here. Okay, so 6 over 2 or 6 divided by 2, that's equal to 3. And then x to the fifth divided by x, well, we have five x's on top and one x on the bottom. Okay, so this single x on the bottom is going to kill one of the x's on top. So we have five, but one of them are going to die. So then we're just going to be left with four. Okay, so we're going to have x to the fourth, right? x to the fourth. Okay, so then we're just left with the square root of three x to the fourth, right? Now, when you're just left with basically a number and a variable, all you have to do is basically split these into two different radicals, okay? So the square root of 3x to the fourth, you can break down into the square root of 3 times the square root of x to the fourth, right? Man, that sounded like Kermit. Okay, so the square root of 3 times the square root of x to the fourth. Now, the square root of 3, we can't break that down anymore. But the square root of x to the fourth, we can break that down uh, because the square root of x to the fourth is just x squared. Okay, and in case you're confused as to how that happens, well, x to the fourth, right, we're taking the square root of x to the fourth. Now, whenever you take the square root of anything, it's the exact same thing as raising it to the half power, okay? So it's like we took this whole thing, x to the fourth, and raised it to the half power, okay? And now I know you're like, ugh, fractions. I know, I agree. But this is actually not that bad, right? So how do you raise a power to another power? Well, you just multiply those together, right? So four times a half is just equal to two, right? So then here we really have x to the second power, right? So that's how we get x squared right there. So x to the fourth, or the square root of x to the fourth is equal to x squared. And then the square root of three, like we said, we can't reduce that anymore, right? So then we're just left with the square root of three times x squared, okay? Now, whatever is not in a radical is normally what you wanna put at the very beginning. So you just want to flip the position of these two. So we're going to write the x squared first, and then we're going to multiply that by the square root of 3. All right, so then your final answer right here is x squared root 3. Okay, so here we have the square root of 24r to the fifth over 2r. All right, so this one's obviously a little different, right, because we don't have a radical in the denominator, just in the numerator, okay? So this is the only one we really have to simplify. All right, so... In this case, what you want to do is basically just split up your radical between your numbers and your variables, all right? So the square root of 24r to the fifth, we can break up into the square root of 24 times the square root of r to the fifth, okay? I'm just breaking up the numbers from the variables, right? And then uh, this is still over 2r, right? 2r. Okay, so then all we really have to simplify are these two radicals right here. So first of all, the square root of 24, that's not a perfect square, but we can still break it down. Okay, so 24, I can break that down into its factors, right? I can break that down into 4 times 6, right? There's a couple other ways we can break it down. We can break it down into 12 times 2. We can do 8 times 3. But the specific reason I want to use 4 times 6 is because 4 right here is a perfect square. And whenever we can include a perfect square as one of our factors, we want to do that because it simplifies our math up here, okay? So again, 24, I can break down into 4 times 6, right? So the square root of 24, I can break down the same way. I can break it down into the square root of 4 times the square root of 6, okay? And then we're multiplying by the square root of r to the fifth, right? But r to the fifth here, we can break down essentially the same way we just broke down 24, okay? So r to the fifth, we can break down a couple different ways also, right? We can break it down into r to the fourth times r. We can also break it down into 
r squared times r cubed, okay? But here, the specific reason I wanna use r to the fourth times r is because r to the fourth is a perfect square, okay? r squared is actually also a perfect square, but the reason I wanna use r to the fourth is because it has a bigger exponent. And when it comes to the variables, you wanna just use the one that has the biggest exponent, right? So four is obviously the biggest exponent out of all of these, so that's why I wanna include it. And to just be clear about the perfect squares, so with numbers, our perfect squares are four, nine, 16, 25, 36, 49, right? 64, 81, right? We could keep going. But the main point is when you take the square root of any of these numbers, you get just a regular whole number, right? So the square root of four is equal to two. The square root of nine is three, the square root of 16 is four, right? And so on. And we can do the same thing with variables, okay? So the perfect square for variables, uh, we can just use r in this case, would be like r squared, r to the fourth, r to the sixth, r to the eighth, okay? And we could keep going. But essentially, you just have to have an even number right there for your exponent or for your power, okay? Because when you take the square root of these, well, the square root of r squared is just r. The square root of r to the fourth is r squared. The square root of r to the sixth is r cubed, okay? And then here it'd be r to the fourth, right? And you just keep going, okay? So r to the fifth, this is obviously an odd number. Five is an odd number, right? So we can break it down into r to the fourth times r. Okay, so that's why we can break down the square root of r to the fifth into the square root of r to the fourth times the square root of r, okay? And then this is gonna all be over 2r, right? Now we can simplify some things, okay? So first of all, the square root of four, we know exactly what that's equal to, that's equal to two, right? So then we have two times the square root of six, square root of six, and then we're multiplying that by this one right here, the square root of r to the fourth, which again is equal to r squared, and then we're multiplying that by the square root of r, which we can't simplify that anymore, so we'll just leave it as the square root of r, okay? And then this is all over 2r, okay? Now there's some things we can cancel out here, okay? So we have a two on top and two on the bottom, so those cancel out. And then here we have an r on the bottom and we have two r's on top, right? So this one r on the bottom is gonna kill one of the r's on the top. So we're only gonna be left with one r right there. Okay, so then on top over here, all we're left with is the square root of six times r times the square root of r, right? The square root of six times r times the square root of r, and there's nothing left in the, the denominator. Okay, and there's one last way we can simplify this right here. So whatever's not underneath a radical, you wanna just list that first. So we have an r right here, right? That's the only thing that's not underneath a radical. So we'll write that right there. But then if you notice, we have a six and an r that are underneath a radical, right? So we're gonna combine both of those under just one radical as six r, okay? So then your final answer right here would just be r times the square root of six r. Boom. Okay, here's our last problem. All right, so again, we have a radical over a radical, right? So we just want to combine all this crap under one big radical, right? So first of all, we're gonna have all this junk on top, right? 75 AB to the eighth, okay? 75 AB to the eighth, and that's gonna be over all this junk right here, 3A cubed B to the fourth, okay? So we can start simplifying some stuff, right? So first of all, let's simplify the numbers. So 75 divided by three, that's equal to 25, all right? Now with a's, let's see, we have one a on top and three a's on the bottom, right? So this one a is going to kill one of the a's on the bottom. So we had three, but now we just have two, right? So we have a squared on the bottom, right? So it's gonna be over a squared, right? Now with the b's, we have eight b's on top, four b's on the bottom. So these four b's on the bottom are gonna kill four of the b's on the top. So we're just gonna be left with four, right? So b to the fourth on the top. Okay, now we have 25 b to the fourth over a squared, right? So we're taking the square root of that. So what we can do from here is actually take the square root of each of these individually, okay? So I can have the square root of 25 b to the fourth over 
the square root of the denominator over here, a squared. Okay, so the reason we can do that is, well, let's look at the very beginning, right? We have two separate radicals, right? So then we just basically combine them into one big radical, right? But it works the exact same way going in the other direction. Because if we have just a big radical like that, well, we can just split it back up into two different radicals, okay? So that's what we're doing here, right? We have one big radical, so we're just splitting it up into the top and the bottom, okay? So let's uh, simplify the top here first. So the square root of 25b to the fourth, okay? So the way you can think about this is take the square root, of again, of just the number, and then take the square root of just the variable, right? So the square root of 25, that's just equal to five, right? And the square root of b to the fourth, that's equal to b squared, okay? And then that's gonna be over the bottom right here. So the square root of a squared is just equal to a, right? So we're just gonna have a on the bottom, right? So then that right there is your final answer. So if you found the video helpful, definitely leave a thumbs up down below. And if you have any other questions or wanna see any other examples, just let me know in the comment section below. Also, there's a couple playlists attached that I think you'll find helpful. So definitely check those out and I'll see you there.